Would you join me in the call to worship? Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. He is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. He always stands by his covenant. The commitment he made to a thousand generations. Praise the Lord. Would you join me in prayer? Jesus, uh, we come together to give thanks. Lord, we are grateful for your word that calls us to prayer, that calls us to praise you. Lord, even in these dark times, these challenging times, Lord, we are grateful. Help us, Lord, as we come to worship, that you would prepare our hearts, that we would find reasons to give thanks in the little things and in the big things. And thank you, Lord, that we can be together virtually in this way. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, my name is Sandy Asker, and I am fairly new to Mankato and fairly new to this tradition. We have this tradition of being together in an ecumenical way, gathering different churches because years ago, the story goes that uh, the Evangelical Covenant Church had built a new building. And as we are rejoicing in the new building in the fall, apparently when the boiler was it, I think that started, our church literally blew up. And as we were struggling that fall, there were other churches, fellow churches that came along to support us in this time of challenge and crisis. And so this year, we might consider ourselves a little blown up. 2020 has definitely been a challenge. And so we are glad to gather ecumenically different uh, denominations coming together because we need each other. The church continues to need one another uh, in this time. So we are grateful that you are here joining us for worship. And we hope that this service connects you to Jesus. Well, welcome to Thanksgiving service. Glad you're here. Glad you're tuning in. We're going to sing some songs, some hymns together, some songs that have been sung in the church for ages. Maybe you know these words. Maybe they're new for you. Go ahead and sing along if you'd like, or read them and listen to them and let them into your soul. Spirit 
uplifts and sustains you. Oh. And praise you, the Lord. Oh, let all that is in me adore Him. And all that has life and breath come now is before him and let the amen sound from his people again and gladly forever adore him gladly forever adore Amen. Sound from his people again. Oh, 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 oh amen. Oh, 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 amen. Oh, reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and pleading with thanksgiving. Yet let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Sweet dream. 
Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate some of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. Therefore, they said to him, What are we to do so that we may accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What then are you doing as a sign so that we may see and believe you? What work are you performing? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will not be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. Hey friends, thank you so much for being with us on this very different Thanksgiving <laughs> ecumenical service. Uh, historically, this has been Holy Rosary, um, Messiah, Belgrade, and Crossview, and you heard Sandy earlier talk about the history. So I thought we'd do something different. Uh, first thing we'll do, we'll go around and introduce who we are, what church we're from, and then we're just going to have a conversation, fireside, although there's no fireside. <laughs> Uh, conversation about gratitude from our different perspectives. So my name is Brad Jackson, and I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here at Crossview Covenant Church. My name is Sandy Asker, and I am a co-pastor of Crossview Rosa Parks. We are trying to plant a new church in the midst of COVID. Uh, my name is Dan Crandall, and the lead pastor of Belgrade Avenue United Methodist Church in Lower North. 
And I am Trish Reedstrom, pastor at Messiah Lutheran in Upper North Mankato. Awesome. Thanks for inviting us here. Thank you guys very, very, very much for being here. So uh, this is not some scripted thing, so it could well be a train wreck, but we hope <laughs> not. Um, but we're just going to go around and each give, and, and we might have some interaction and stuff like that. But I, one of my favorite, um, I mean, I think gratitude is such a huge, huge deal. So let me read our text first. Uh, it's Philippians 4, uh, 4 through 9. It says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. It's an interesting word for the COVID realities that we're in. Don't be uh, anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to, to God, which is such, I mean, whole conversation around that, right? Anxiety and think, gratitude. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What you have learned and received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Um, so I'll jump in first. The, a few years ago, I read that book by Ann Boskamp. Have you guys read that, 1,000 yep. Gifts, yep. which is just yep. one of my favorite books of all time. And, and she talks in the early part of it where um, studies have been done that show people who live a lifestyle of gratitude, where, where it's a very purposeful, intentional reality. Um, I mean, they're, they're psychologically, they're healthy. I mean, there were all these things that, that it pointed to. And one of the quotes from that book that, that I really like is she says, it's habits that, it, that can imprison you, and it's habits that can free you. But when thanks to God becomes a habit, so joy in God becomes your life. Yeah. I just think it's so, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it saddens me when I see so many followers of Christ not living this sort of joy-filled mm -hmm. reality. And, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of it is connected to, to gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, and in our home, we have two teenage daughters, a sophomore and senior in high school, and one of the things that I love to watch is the friends of my daughters, the ones that, that practice gratitude and the ones that don't. You know, you come over for a meal, the ones that are able to say thank you, the ones that have no clue how to say thank you. And we can talk about a whole parenting thing there, right? <laughs> but I think gratitude is such an intriguing thing to watch in or not in other people, but then also to have the introspective, like, am, am I living that type, type of way? So those are some of my, I mean, I, we, I could talk about gratitude all day, but... There's, there's four of us here. So I, I've read that book yeah. as well, used it as a book study. And for those who don't know it, one of the things, the, the premise of the book is she tries to, she's going to come up with a thousand things yeah. that she's thankful for. And I've started doing that practice and I've done it periodically yeah. off and on. And, you know, for, I think a lot of us, we begin and we think, oh, I'm grateful for my family and my friends and my house and uh, food on the table. And those are all good yeah. things. But if you're going to start coming up with a list that will number a thousand or even a hundred, you start realizing all the things mm -hmm. you're thankful for, like toilet paper, right? <laughs> and remember March um, and a candle burning mm -hmm. in the evening and yeah. the smell as you walk in a home yeah. and somebody's been cooking for you. And it does, it cultivates yeah. this lifestyle. And at one point when I was practicing yeah. that, that spiritual practice, yeah. which is really what it is, exactly we right. um, had gone on a mission trip to Guatemala with our kids, you know, our, our, our youth group from church. Yeah. And we were coming home. And so you're tired, you wanna be home. You know, it had a great time, but it's been 10 days and we all just wanna go home. Well, we missed our connecting flight. Hmm. We knew it was going to be so close. We ran through the airport. We dumped our luggage, you know, because you had to go through yeah. customs. And we get to the gate. You can see the plane, and they wouldn't let us on. And, you know, people were, like, totally bummed. Yeah. But because I had been practicing that spiritual practice, it was so easy for me to mm -hmm. say, you know what, it's okay. 
there was another flight. Aren't we lucky mm. that there's another flight? We're still getting home tonight. And yeah. it's happened before, so we could call our family and let them yeah. know to wait. Yeah. And because we'd all been running to the gate, we could have been split up. Isn't it a good thing we didn't get split up? Yeah. And now we have time to eat, <laughs> and we had time to play one more card game. Yeah. And I, I realized at some point in that evening as I'm telling this to the kids, no, this is a great thing. Yeah. It was because I had been practicing yeah. gratitude. Um, That's it was so good. only because I had been practicing gratitude that I was able to turn what could have been a miserable end to yeah. a mission trip into it's not bad. Yeah. We can still be grateful. Um, and it was a good lesson for me just to keep remembering yeah. over and over again. So. And you, I, I think yeah. what she hits at is exactly what you're saying is like, it invites a different level of attentiveness, mm -hmm. like awareness too. I mean, because you read her list, and it's like, man, I, I, I don't even know if I noticed those things. So I, you're, that's so, so good. Mm -hmm. huh. I have a, a sign in my office that um, my daughter gave me, but I'd seen it several years ago. I, I should have looked at it to make sure I get it right. Uh, what would happen if you woke up today with only the things you'd given thanks for yesterday? Oh. <laughs> so, so think about that for a minute, right? I use that on my kids too. Yeah. That's, that's so good. good. That's a, that's what would, an ouch what right would there. it be? Yeah, that's if really you good. You woke up today with only the things you'd given thanks for yesterday. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's really good. What about you, Dan? Oh man. Well, I think uh, what's interesting to me is I, I I remember a couple of years ago I tried to do the 30 days of gratitude thing, where mm. you wake up and you. Uh, the way I did it was that we did list three things every morning, you know, and the idea is, is the more you list it, the more all of a sudden you, the more you're looking for things to be thankful for, huh. all of a sudden you start to see those things, you know. Um, but for me, that worked for a day and it, then it didn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm thinking, well, what's my problem? You know, I, yeah. must, I must be a filthy sinner, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I say that tongue in cheek, of course. But, you know, I think that there's barriers to gratitude sometimes for me. Mm. And, and, you know, and one thing I love about this passage is it starts with Paul saying, rejoice in the Lord always. Mm. And my favorite theologian, N.T. Wright, says that rejoice could better be translated celebrate. Mm -hmm. So celebrate in the Lord always. But what makes that even more powerful is he's in prison when he's writing this. Yeah. You know, and so he's sitting in prison and he's telling them, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to preach the gospel. I'm wanting to continue to plant churches and, and push, push the ball down the field with the kingdom of God in, in, in the Roman Empire here. And I'm sitting in prison. And you would think I, I wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm... You know, in, in the first chapter of Philippians, he's like, I've, I've preached to the whole imprisonment guard. He's like, I'm, I'm happy right where I'm at. I'm thankful right here. doing. I'm building the kingdom right where I'm at. And so he get, we get down here and he's talking, hey, rejoice, you know. And, and then he goes into talking about, you know, think on these things, whatever's, you know, pure, pleasing, yeah. commendable, you know. And when we get to that, that's what I realized was my issue is because my headspace was crowded with all the things that I had to get done in every day, mm -hmm. you know. And, and even though we're not in prison, like Paul is in prison, sometimes in our, um, you know, in our culture, I think our imprisonment is productivity. You know, we get, yeah. we get imprisoned to our own to-do lists and I get this done and I have to be productive here and I got to meet this deadline. I got to go home and get, you know, groceries and do, do the laundry and get the kids to bed and, you know, and I got, uh, you know, make, pay the or, bills. Or like the stuff you need. Exactly. Like I don't have, yeah, that's so yep, good. Yep. And we become imprisoned to our own lifestyles. Yeah. Um, and so, but... But the more I am, find that I'm consumed with those things, it, my headspace gets blocked huh. because it's almost like it's a log jam. And so the, the saying that pops in my mind is that, what's con that which consumes your thoughts controls your life. You know? mm -hmm. And so this is like what telling you, he, Paul's like saying, it's easier to rejoice and celebrate and be thankful when you have a clear headspace, when you're Whatever, whatever those honorable yeah. and true and pleasing things are, you think about those things and it's easier to be thankful because it clears up the log jam, you know. That's good. And so that's one thing that's helped me. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite verses. I am not a huge Bible memorization person. I wish I could be, but that is a verse that I remember uh, from college hmm. memorizing. Anxiety is definitely something that I wouldn't say I oftentimes struggle with, but this season has brought on some new anxiety. And so when I think about that verse, be anxious for nothing, but in all things. And so for me, uh, we are planting a church. We're starting something new. And everyone asks us like sort of trep with trepidation, like how are things? You know, how's the church? <laughs> Do you have a church? And so Brian and I find 
that even the smallest thing we are grateful for. So if it's a new person serving, if it's a family that comes back for the second time, if it is that the kids did great in nursery and didn't cry for their parent, you know, it's the little things which honestly, regardless of COVID or not, we should always be grateful for the little or the big things. And I, I, I think the gratitude um, offsetting anxiety is a tool mm -hmm. that we could use in the midst of these times. Um, there's a song that uh, I heard a long time ago that sticks in my head that I'm sure it comes from a psalm, which is a grateful heart prepares the way for you, my mm -hmm. God. And mm -hmm. so when we feel like That's we good. have too many things in our head, when we feel like we're blocked from maybe being grateful, um, I do think it's just becoming aware of the big or little, asking God for help to be able to see it, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to be grateful. And it does that, for me at least, it fights off some of that anxiety. You remember what you can do or can't do. There's a woman in our small group who when the stay-at-home orders came and there were all these lists of what you can't mm -hmm. do, she gratefully said to herself, what can I do? And so at that point, the governor was saying, hey, you guys all, I think it was people could get into state parks for free, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe even seniors specifically. And so she decided to go to every state park in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. She started in March and she just finished. I don't know if we told you this, but That's in awesome. October, she went to every state park in the state of Minnesota. So, I, I, you know, there's something about gratitude there. Like, what can we do? We can still be grateful in the midst of all this, even with the snow coming yeah. down, the COVID, not being able to do Thanksgiving as we're used to we can still fight off whatever it is with gratitude. You got to go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's so important yeah. in this particular season because we're all lamenting, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and you look at the Psalms, mm. especially, we've been spending a lot of time there and the Psalms of lament and grief, anxiety, loss, so many of those emotions that we feel, but so often they end with, but still I trust in you. Mm. Mm -hmm. But still, your your steadfast love, yeah. your your Hesed love, is there yeah. forever. And you know, I think for many of us, it's going to be hard to feel like we have something to be mm -hmm. thankful for this Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You're not together with your family like you wanted. You're mm -hmm. missing out. Schools are closing. All the things that we grieve, all the more important mm -hmm. to give thanks. Um, it's the only way I think yeah. we can manage our grief. Is through gratitude and yeah. scripture shows us that over mm -hmm. and over again starting with Paul preaching from prison you know mm -hmm. and, and the 150 Psalms that say that I, so yes. I think there's so much truth Sandy in what you're saying about finding the gratitude in the grief and the anxiety and the worry. Mm -hmm. It sort of gives you almost like a, a different perspective on how to approach mm -hmm. I mean life's gonna throw crap at you Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a season where it feels heavier than normal. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm guessing that friend is a fairly grateful person. And so when life through COVID, a grateful person says, well, let's hit the state parks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. But I do like that. And I think you you hit where the majority of us live is in, I, the language is so good, like imprisoned by all these different things. And um, I think this um, circle reminds us that, that number two, gratitude is centered on celebrating King Jesus, right? Mm. But then, um, I mean, just to celebrate these other churches that, and the ministry that you, you all, we all, Holy Rosary, every church in town is doing to show the love of Christ in a season where, where love does not seem to be the dominant word, the mm. dominant sound that people are hearing. So, um, friends, we appreciate you being in this little conversation with us. Um, and this was, it's always fun. I, something like this, I feel like I get to the end. This is more fun than I thought. We could go on and on. Oh, yeah, we are, yeah. We're pastors who could go on and on. But to honor your time, and um, we hope this has been a blessing. And as you go into tomorrow, whatever it looks like for you, um, whether you're alone, maybe with some people, whatever it might be, um, we hope you'll find space um, to, to have gratitude to celebrate King Jesus, and to, uh, to let joy be the theme for you tomorrow. God bless. Well, thank you so much, Dan, Trish, Sandy, and Brad, for sharing with us this evening. I'm Aaron Thompson, one of the pastors at Crossview Covenant Church. And now we've moved to that part of the service where we get to respond to God's faithfulness, and we get to be people 
who get to celebrate thankfulness of what God has given to us. Everything that we have is because of what God has given us. And the amazing thing is when we give a little bit back to him, he blesses that and he blesses other people in our community as a result of that. Well, each year during this ecumenical service, we pick and choose and designate a nonprofit organization within our city to receive the Thanksgiving offering. And this year, the offering is going to go to Pact Ministries. Pact Ministries stands for People and Christ Together. Pact Ministry has two different forms of its ministries. One is the neighborhood thrift store, which is in Lower North, and also Food for All. Typically what happens is the thrift store um, sells its um, products and with that money they use it to buy fresh and healthy produce for people in need within our community at Food for All. Now during COVID for several months the thrift store was closed down but Food for All continued to um, give people in need. They had I think about 225 boxes every single month at the second Saturday of every month at Goodridge Construction Boxes are given out to people who need that food. And so it's our opportunity, and I invite you to give at this Thanksgiving um, service offering. What you can do if you want to give, you can give online by uh, following the link, or you can write uh, a physical check, and you can make it out to Crossview Covenant Church, send it to Crossview, and make sure within the memo line that you write Thanksgiving service. And we together will be able to support and sponsor and bless Pact Ministries during this season when there are people in our community who are in need.
Let's pray. This Thanksgiving, we bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. We make a joyful noise to you, O Lord. We serve you with gladness. We enter your courts with thanksgiving and your gates with praise, for we are the sheep of your pasture and you are our God. We worship you and adore you, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Be present with us at the table. Be present with us in our homes. Be present with us in our relationships. And God, we do remember those who are struggling and that this Thanksgiving will be hard. Lord, would you comfort them? We also pray for this offering. We thank you for the generosity of the people who are giving today to the Pact Ministries, for all the people that it will bless. God, would you take that offering, multiply it, and use it for your glory. We thank you, God, for all the ways that you are providing for us, ways that we can see and the unseen ways that you are taking care of us. We thank you, God. Amen.